Hey guys, today we are going to be reviewing two-step equations and inequalities. So let's start with two-step equations. Remember, you first have to undo the addition or subtraction with inverse operations to zero out that constant, that number that's by itself. Then you're gonna undo the multiplication or division that's happening to the variable with inverse operations to eliminate that coefficient on the variable. And then you will verify your solution by substituting it back in. So let's start with number one. We have 7x plus 13 equals 90. So the first thing I want to do is undo that plus 13 and make a zero with it by subtracting 13 from both sides. I bring down the 7x. 13 minus 13 zeros out and it equals 90 minus 13 is 77. And then I'm going to get the x by itself by undoing that seven times x, opposite of multiplying is dividing. So I'm gonna divide both sides by seven. And I get x equals 11. Now I'm going to verify my solution by substituting this back in for x. So when I do seven times 11 plus 13, I should get 90. Seven times 11 is 77, and 77 plus 13 is 90, so we did this correctly. So x equals 11 was the correct solution. Okay, let's look at number two. What's the solution to this equation? So I'm trying to get x by itself. First thing I'm going to undo is that minus 16.27 by adding 16.27 to both sides. And I'm adding two numbers that have opposite signs. So I'm going to subtract them and then I'll keep the sign of the larger absolute value. So I'm gonna do 16.27 minus 2.23. Seven minus three is four, two minus two is zero, bring down the decimal, 16 minus two, or six minus two is four, and then I bring down the one. So negative 2.23 plus 16.27 is 14.04 and it's positive since the positive 6.27 had the larger absolute value. And then I bring down the 4x and then I zero out the negative 16.27 plus 16.27. And then my last step to get x by itself is divide by four so now I need to do 14.04 divided by four. And we get 3.51 for x. Okay, number three says what value of x makes the equation model true. So the first thing I want to do is write an equation to match this model. So I have 2x plus three equals a one. And now I'm going to solve this equation for x. So I'm going to first remove that constant by subtracting three from both sides, and I get two x equals negative two, and then I'm gonna divide by two, and negative two divided by two is one. So I get x equals one for my solution. Okay, now we're going to talk about inequalities. So to solve inequalities, we're gonna follow the same steps as we just used with solving equations. The only difference is we're gonna to have to flip the inequality sign if we multiply or divide by a negative when we're solving. And we're also going to graph the solution set for an inequality. So let's review how to graph an inequality first. So x is greater than three would it look like this solution set, x is greater than three. We are gonna have an open circle on three, since three is not included, it's everything greater than three. And then you just have to test the numbers right below and above three to see which makes the inequality true. Four is greater than three, so we are going to shade towards the four. And there is what your number line would look like. 
Okay, next one is x is less than 3. The solution set would look like this. Another open circle on 3 since it's less than 3 but not including 3. And it is 2 that is less than 3. So we're going to shade towards the left. Okay, then x is greater than or equal to 3 would look like this solution set. Since it is equal to 3, we're going to have a closed circle on 3 this time. And then greater than 3 would be 4, so we're going to shade towards the 4. And then last one, x is less than or equal to 3. The solution set would look like this. We're going to have a closed circle on 3, and less than or equal to would be 2. 2 is less than 3, so we're going to shade towards the 2. Okay, now we are going to solve an inequality and graph its solution set. So I have 3x plus 2.5 is greater than 7. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to a decimal because those are easier for me to work with than fractions um, and that makes a nice decimal two and a half is 2.5. So now what I want to do is get rid of that plus 2.5, zero it out by subtracting 2.5. And I get 3x is greater than 4.5. And then my last step is to divide both sides by 3, and I get x is greater than 1.5, but since the original problem was in a fraction, my solution set probably needs to be in a fraction too. So I'm going to make it x is greater than 1 and a half. So now I need to graph this solution set on the number line. So one and a half is gonna go in the middle since that was my solution set. One is right below it and two is right above it. This is an open circle since it's just greater than and two is greater than one and a half. So I'm gonna to shade towards the two. Okay, let's look at number five. It says solve the inequality and graph the solution set. So first thing I'm going to do is undo that minus four by adding four to both sides. And I get negative four X is greater than or equal to negative 32 plus four is negative 28. And then I'm going to divide by a negative four. And since I'm dividing by a negative, I need to flip the inequality sign. So my final solution set will be x is less than or equal to negative 28 divided by negative 4 is positive 7. So 7 will go in the middle of my number line. 6 is right below it and 8 is right above it. It is less than or equal to, so 7 is included. I'm going to do a solid circle on 7. And then 6 is less than 7, so I'll sh shade towards the 6. Okay, now we're going to review writing equations and inequalities. So if you have, it'll, it'll tell you to write an equation or an inequality. So if it's talking about an equation, you're going to use the equal sign. And remember some words that mean that are equal to or same. And then if it says an inequality, you'll use an inequality. And there are some key words for um, inequality signs that you might see. So this is the less than sign. Another word that could mean that is under. This is a greater than sign, another word that could mean that is above. This is the less than or equal to sign, another phrase that could mean that is no more than. And this is greater than or equal to, another phrase that could mean that is at least. So let's practice writing equations and inequalities for these scenarios. Number six says, John is saving money to buy a new video game console. He already has $40 saved and he plans to save $10 per week. He wants to have at least $150 saved before he buys the console. Write an inequality that can be used to find X, the number of weeks it will take him to save enough money. So they define the variable for us. X is the number of weeks that it will take him to save enough money. 
So if we go back and look about what John is saving, it says he already has $40 saved. So that's just going to happen once. There's not going to be a variable on that. But then it says he plans to save $10 per week. And remember, X was the number of weeks. So we would put plus 10X because we would multiply the number of weeks that he's saving by 10 since it's $10 per week. Then he wants to have at least $150 saved. So at least means it could equal 150 or be greater than 150. So that would be the greater than or equal to sign. So there is the inequality to show how much money John needs to save. Okay, let's look at number seven. It says Ethan is traveling 90 miles from Austin, Texas to San Antonio, Texas. He has already traveled 15 miles. Write an equation that could be used to find X, the number of hours Ethan will need to travel at 55 miles per hour to reach San Antonio. So X is the number of hours. So he is going to travel 90 miles in total. And we're writing an equation, so it's going to equal that 90. He's already traveled 15 miles. We're not multiplying, that just is a constant number. He's already gone those 15 miles. And he's going to travel the rest at 55 miles per hour. So we would add 55x to that. Okay, number eight says Dylan bought chips and queso for $7.00 and some tacos for $3.50 each. Dylan did not spend more than $18 on the chips and queso and tacos. Write in any quality that could be used to find X, the number of tacos that Dylan could have bought. So again, they told us the variable X is the number of tacos that Dylan could have bought. So he bought the chips and queso, which he just bought one of those. So that's just $7 for the chips and queso. And then we he bought several tacos, some tacos, but we don't know how much. So that'll be 350 and then X represents the number of tacos. And then it said he did not spend more than $18. We're writing it inequality for this. So if he didn't spend more than 18, it could equal 18 or be less than 18. So there's the inequality for that one. Okay, last thing we're gonna look at is angle relationships and equations. So remember, complementary angles are angles that sum to 90 degrees. That would be a right angle. Supplementary angles sum to 180. A common example of supplementary angles is a line because a line has 180 degrees. And then interior angles of triangles also sum to 180 degrees. So we can use these facts to set up equations. Let's look at number nine. It says the measure of angle A is 60 degrees. The measure of angle B is 3x. What is the value of x if A and B are supplementary? So that means that we're going to add them and set them equal to 180. So angle A was 60 plus angle B is 3x. And they're supplementary, so they equal 180 degrees. And now that I have this equation set up, I can find the value of x. I would subtract 60 from both sides. And I get 3x equals 120. And then divide by 3. And I get x equals 40. Okay, number 10 says the measure of angle C is 10x plus 5, and the measure of angle D is 15. What is the value of x if angle C and D are complementary? So complementary means I'll add them together and set them equal to 90. So let's go ahead and do that. Angle C is 10x plus 5, and angle D is 15, and I'm going to set those equal to 90. Okay, before I can solve this equation, I need to simplify this left side. I need to actually add angle C and angle D together. And the two like terms I see are five and 15. So I can simplify that left side to be 10X plus 20 equals 90. So I'm going to subtract 20 
and I get 10x equals 70. And then I'm going to divide by 10 and I get x equals 7. Okay, last one, the angle measures of a triangle are shown in the diagram. What is the value of x? So remember triangles, we can add the three angles and set them equal to 180. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that with this triangle here. The first angle is 20x plus the second angle is 7x plus five plus the last angle is 40. And I'll add those together and set it equal to 180. Okay, now I'm going to combine like terms. 20x plus 7x will combine to make 27x. And then 5 plus 40 is 45. And I'll set it equal to 180. Okay, now I'm going to subtract 45. And I get 27x equals... 135. And now I'm going to divide by 27 and 135 divided by 27 is 5. So x equals 5. 